Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. My name is Jen McEwen. I'm the state senator representing most of the city of Duluth on beautiful Lake Superior. And it is my great honor and privilege to be here this morning with my colleagues, um, Representative Liz Ryer, Representative Liz Bolden, Senator Omar Fateh, and Senator John Marty. Um, to announce the formation of the Minnesota Health Plan Caucus in the Minnesota Legislature. Um, if you'll notice, we have four new legislators in our first term, and also one of our mentors, uh, Senator John Marty. I know that for me, and I can't speak for all of my colleagues, but I think that there is a common thread amongst us, that when we were running for office, when we decided to run for office, and we were running our campaigns, we heard a lot from our constituents about wanting to see a comprehensive, universal coverage health care plan for Minnesota. I know that I heard that in Duluth from many people um, across the spectrum of the health care industry, business, leadership, local leadership in our municipalities, and patients who had had uh, heartbreaking experiences with the health insurance industry and know, knew that we needed some change. So they're asking for some transformative change within our health care system here in Minnesota. So that issue, amongst others, but that issue in particular was something that really drove me in my run uh, for the Minnesota State Senate and that my constituents are very hopeful that is coming up in our future for Minnesota. So the work that we're doing and the reason why we decided to form this caucus is because there has been a tremendous amount of grassworks, grassroots organizing done by citizen groups, by advocacy groups in the state of Minnesota to build up education and awareness about the Minnesota Health Plan authored by Senator John Marty. Um, and again, this is a broad coalition of health justice allies, Healthcare for All Minnesota, groups of healthcare providers, labor, business, municipalities, farmers. It is a broad, broad coalition. And after our press conference today, we're going to go out to the Capitol steps and people will be able to hear from this coalition of allies who are all coming together and have done so much work around organizing for the Minnesota Health Plan. So the purpose of what we're trying to do here in the legislature is to create a structure within the Capitol to give voice and to elevate the work that has already been active and happening with those allies at the grassroots level. Um, we've seen for a number of years since Senator Marty introduced his plan, and um, I will note that Senator Marty wrote a book about his bill and making the case for why we need a comprehensive health care plan in Minnesota that will have, again, comprehensive coverage in terms of care. It will be for it will cover things like um, eye care, hearing, dental, mental health care. It's comprehensive in that way. And it also covers everybody. So people's health care health care is not tied to their employment. They just get health care as a right by virtue of being a Minnesotan. And so um, if you haven't checked out this book by Senator John Marty, please do. Um, he has a website that has a wealth of information answering people's questions about this plan cost, coverage, all sorts of the normal questions that people would have about what this would look like for Minnesota. Um, and that's at mnhealthplan.org. People, people can check out that website. Um, just real quick before I pass the microphone off to my colleagues, I, I wanted to note just how important it is um, for those of us who live outside of the metro in Minnesota to be pursuing this plan in particular. In northeastern Minnesota and in other parts of rural Minnesota, we've seen a consolidation within the healthcare industry. And this is the natural result of having a profit-driven healthcare system, where now we have a situation, for example, for people who live in Grand Marais, Minnesota, up on the shore, North Shore, up close to Canada. 
People who live up there who are having a child have to make a two and a half hour drive on a two lane highway 61 along Lake Superior to get down to Duluth to deliver a baby. That's unacceptable. It shouldn't be like that. There's no reason why we should have those shortages. So this type of health plan would allow us to have more control and to make sure and to ensure that we have adequate services throughout the state of Minnesota so people don't have to, for example, drive two and a half hours when they need to deliver a baby. And that reason, as well as the financial reasons for passing something like, like this, are what led my city of Duluth just very recently at the end of last year to pass a unanimous resolution in the city council asking our legislative delegation to move forward with the Minnesota health plan. And in that resolution, and again, it was passed unanimously by the Duluth city council, which I think speaks to the growing recognition across party, across political ideology, across that spectrum of just the myriad of reasons why we need to adopt a universal health plan like the Minnesota health plan. So the, the Duluth City Council spoke to how the Minnesota Department of Health just last year noted that at the current rate of growth of um, Minnesota's total health care spending is forecast to double in the next 10 years, to be 19% of our state economic spending, more than housing, more than transportation. And additionally, the Duluth City Council noted the growing cost of the health care of health care for our municipality and that we are at a breaking point. So, so that really is the takeaway, that we are at a breaking point in our health care system. This is being recognized across interest groups, across municipalities, and there's a growing recognition of the need for a plan like the Minnesota Health Care Plan. Um, so with that, I will... Um, pass the mic over to my colleague, Representative Liz Ryer, and um, she'll share with us um, some of the issues that she'd like to raise as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McCann. Uh, good morning, I'm State Representative Liz Ryer. I represent Egan House District 51B, and thank you all for being here. I also want to acknowledge and thank our House sponsor, uh, Representative Cedric Frazier, for carrying this bill, another first term representative who also tapped into the vision on the importance of this and is um, a leader in making it happen. But I'm here as part of the Minnesota Health Plan Caucus because healthcare is a basic human right. And we have a responsibility to ensure that everyone in our state can get the care they need. Unfortunately, the employer-based healthcare system in place now was not designed with this goal in mind. Its initial purpose was to give employers a way to attract workers during World War II wage freezes. And while this was appealing to workers, the health of employees was not the primary motivation, and that shows today. In our system, the core relationship between provider and patient can get lost. Employees face open enrollment decisions that trade off benefit sets, provider networks, and costs. Employers and payers, like insurance companies and pharmacy benefit managers, make decisions about what drugs to cover and whether patients really need certain procedures and tests. Complex processes on the payer side add costs, Doctors get frustrated by insurance company oversight, and the person receiving care gets further and further from the decision making. Adding to this, we've seen actual costs of care, including prescription drugs, skyrocket beyond logical levels. Finally, access to benefits for working people are not equal based on where or whether they work, with sharp distance differences between large and small companies based on the resources they have to invest. The Minnesota Health Plan redesigns this system. It takes out structural barriers between patient and provider. It equalizes the opportunity for small and large businesses. And it removes much of the costly complexity in our current system. It creates openings for entrepreneurship 
because people are no longer bound to jobs to keep their benefits. Entrepreneurs are job creators, and we need them in order to have a thriving economy. For small businesses, it removes administrative burdens that take business owners away from their core business. In short, the Minnesota Health Plan offers a better experience for patients, providers, and employers, and uses valuable health care funds to pay for care, not administration. It ensures that care providers spend their time with patients and not paperwork. It makes health care work for everyone. I've said that health care is a basic human right. It's the moral thing to do. In addition, though, as legislators, we are responsible to be good stewards of state resources. The Minnesota Health Plan uses our dollars wisely, and it makes good economic sense to invest in the people of our state, to have healthy people and a healthy community. It's time to move the Minnesota Health Plan forward. Thank you. And now I will turn it over to my colleague, Senator Omar Hathaway. Thank you. <coughs> Hello everyone, my name is uh, Senator Omar Fateh. I'm the state senator representing uh, South Minneapolis, uh, District 62. Um, so thank you all for being here. Uh, I could not be more proud of my colleagues who are joining us in forming uh, our out, uh, this caucus and our outside organizational partners uh, in the Healthcare Justice Coalition who have been fighting this difficult fight for years. I also want to thank uh, Senator John Marty uh, who has been the author of this legislation, and has spent so much of his career uh, fighting to fix our broken healthcare system. Healthcare justice is a major racial and economic justice issue for our state. We see huge racial disparities between our BIPOC Minnesotans and their white peers when it comes to healthcare outcomes. The infant mortality rate, for example, is disproportionately much higher uh, for black babies, um, and that's simply immoral. Uh, part of why we see these racial disparities is that under this employer-based uh, get-what-you-can-afford system, uh, BIPOC communities simply are not receiving as high quality of care as their white neighbors. And due to a high out-of-pocket costs, they are likely to seek out and receive care. They are not as likely uh, to seek out care in the early stages of illness, which saves lives and can prevent the major need for major treatments uh, down the road. We begin to close the gaps when it comes to the health care of our people. Uh, but to do this, in order to do so, we must, separately, we must separate the quality of care from the ability to pay. There have been past attempts to do this without moving to a single-payer system. Uh, they have not worked. There is only one way to address our needs, and that is to guarantee health care as a human right for everybody. I want us. Uh, and I want to close by addressing uh, a topic that is on the minds of uh, everybody here in St. Paul, and that's the issue of public safety. That for far too long, uh, policymakers have ignored the connection between public safety and public health. We have tried to put the two in discrete boxes, and we have only attempted to improve public safety through punishment, uh, penalization, and incarceration. And that is a failed approach. I think nearly all of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle would agree with me when I say this. Mental illness, uh, addiction, these are major aggravating factors when it comes to the challenges in public safety. Yet, as a state, we do not guarantee high quality of care for those who are struggling the most. The Minnesota Health Plan is the solution to this problem. It is the only way to ensure that every single Minnesotan is able to receive high quality care that they deserve. And when it's finally passed, and sign into law, Minnesotans can begin to, to see its far-reaching impacts in racial equity, economic equity, public health, and public safety. So I'm grateful to everyone who is here with us today. So let's come together and let's, and let's get this done. Thank you. And I'd like to pass it to my colleague, Liz Bolden. Representative Liz Bolden. Good morning. I'm State Representative Liz Bolden. I represent District 25B in Rochester. I'm also a registered nurse. I'm excited to move the Minnesota Health Plan forward for the same reason I've worked in healthcare for nearly 20 years, because I believe healthcare is a basic human right and everyone deserves care, no exceptions. Nearly two years in a global pandemic has highlighted the necessity of this, 
Not only is it the humanly just approach for everyone to have access to quality health care, but it's a matter of public health and safety. The Minnesota Health Plan would be a single statewide plan that would cover all Minnesotans for all their medical needs, prescription drugs, vision and hearing care, mental health care, dental care, chemical dependency and substance use treatment, medical equipment and supplies, home care services, and nursing home care. It would allow patients to choose their doctors and care providers. It will reduce costs by negotiating fair prices and cutting administrative bureaucracy, not by restricting or denying care. It will focus on preventative care and early interventions to improve health, a true health care system, instead of the sickness management patchwork we have now. I cannot tell you how many patients I have cared for in the ICU who were there because our health care system failed them. The grandmother who could not afford her blood pressure medication, so she rationed it and ended up in my ICU after having a stroke. The young father who could not afford dental care and ended up in my ICU with a brain infection from an untreated tooth decay. The middle-aged mother who worked two jobs and had insurance but couldn't afford the co-pays for the tests her provider recommended, so ended up in my ICU by the time her cancer was discovered when it was far less treatable. A man who needed a fairly complicated surgery, had insurance, and spent hours, days, and weeks trying to navigate the complex and opaque system to ensure the surgeon he chose was in network and covered by that very expensive insurance, only to find out afterwards that due to some fine print, it wasn't covered, and he ended up owing tens of thousands of dollars out of pocket. Sadly, these stories are not unique. Nearly 5% of Minnesotans have no health coverage at all, and upwards of a million Minnesotans who have coverage still cannot afford the care they need. Healthcare expenses are the, are the cause of more bankruptcies than all other causes combined. This is wrong. The good news is it doesn't have to be this way. We can ensure that all Minnesotans have the care they need, and the Minnesota Health Plan is the way to do that. I'm grateful for the partnership of ally and advocacy organizations, and for so many of my colleagues who are also committed to this work. We'll continue to, until we get that done, and all Minnesotans have the care they need and deserve. Thank you. And with that, we will take questions if you have any. I assume the legislation has been introduced in both bodies. Will the ha do you expect that the House will act on, on it this session? So it has been introduced in both bodies, that's correct. Um, uh, Senator, um, yes, it, it has in both bodies. I do, uh, you know, there's the challenges of the divided legislature and, and we, we know that this is not going to, you know, cross the finish line, you know, immediately. There is still work to be done and that's why we are here. We are gonna continue that work. Uh, we are hoping for, for movement in the house. It would be uh, excellent if we could have even an informational hearing this session. I will be advocating for that. Um, so we, we, will, we will keep pushing and, and, and keep working. This, this isn't something that's gonna happen immediately, but uh, there's, uh, as has been said, there's the, the, the grassroots, there's, there's a desire for this and a need for this across the state. And so uh, we are working to do that work under the dome as other organizations are doing that across the state. I just, I just would really quickly add, one thing that's really important for people to know is that Senator John Marty introduced this legislation some time ago, and it has been introduced in both houses now for some years, right? We have a number of colleagues, and actually I think we're at about 60, 60 members who, when we formed this caucus and we put out the word and said, would you like to join us? They said, yes, please add our names. So we have 60, co 60 colleagues who have joined us in the formation of this caucus. Who have, Some of them have been co-authors in past years and are co-authors right now. But there is a desire to see this. So the formation of our caucus is really to just take this up to the next level of organizing within the state legislature. And again, to bring the advocacy of all of those allied groups out in our community, the Minnesotans who are clamoring for us to act on this. Senator Murray, would you answer a question? So just, I've talked to you about this a couple of years ago, and, and as Senator McEwen just said, this has been something that you have been caring for a long time. So what does it mean to you personally now that you have this groundswell around you that I don't think you've had quite like right. this before. I, I gotta say I'm very excited. These four and their colleagues came together to form a caucus for the sole purpose of trying to figure out the strategy to make this happen. 
We have to make it happen. We can. And, you know, some folks, some folks in our own party will say that, you know, hey, this isn't going to happen. I keep thinking, well, we can't go that fast, they keep saying. We've got to tinker a little bit more here. We can do a little better here. Francis Perkins started pushing for this during the New Deal almost 90 years ago. And the stories that Liz tells as a nurse, every one of us has heard people. We know people who die from this. We know so many people who are struggling with mental health and they can't get the treatment they get. And we have to do it. And so what I've got to say is that when they've got 60 colleagues co-authoring a bill, when they're pulling together to organize it, yeah, maybe this year we can get moving forward on getting a cost estimate for it, because we spend twice what any other country in the world spends. There are about eight exceptions to that, and they're way below us. And we have worse outcomes. And not just, as Omar pointed out, about how in the African-American community it's far worse infant mortality rate, but our average as a country is way below other countries. We're not doing the best, and so we have to make the change. It's that urgent. And so, you know, I've been around a long time, so when I say it's urgent, though, well, yeah, it's always urgent. <laughs> but I think they're coming in from fresh off campaigns, first time running, and they're seeing this. And, and um, what's happening in our state is not acceptable. It's a shame. So I'm, I'm really excited they're doing this. I'm very excited about it. Representative Fraser is very strongly advocating. They're strongly advocating. I think we've, I can tell you I've had a lot of bills I've had over the years that some of them passed overnight, but some of them were 20-year battles, and they won. This is one that uh, they're newer here. I'm saying I don't want to leave this place until we pass this thing, because every Minnesotan deserves health care, and we can't have more dying from it. I have one more. <laughs> I just, I, I'd like to know how you counter the charge of socialism, because anytime anybody talks about universal health care, you know, single payer, there's always the, no, you want socialist medicine, and we can't have that in the United States. And, and what would you say to that? Well, the first thing I'd say is back in the 1950s, President Eisenhower said, I hope people don't confuse social benefit with socialism, or words to that effect. The other thing I'd say is that a socialist system would be like the VA, where the care system is owned as well. This is not socialism. The provider community remains a business community. There's no socialist uh, possession of the full means of production, and it, it just, uh, it's just not an accurate statement for the, those kinds of reasons. Can I add one thing to that? Yeah. I, other thing is the reason behind the question, the reason people ask that, the reason they say this, they, don't, they want to control their health care. They don't want government controlling their health care. we got a system now where we don't control our health care. Our doctors don't control our health care. We and our doctors together don't control our health care. Insurance companies control it. Employers control it. Government controls it. Under this plan, who rules? Patients and their doctors. They make the decision without the interference. The health plan is not allowed to interfere with that. And that's a fundamental difference. We want to make sure everybody is covered for all their needs, including mental health, including everything else, and they get the care they want from the providers they want. This is the only plan, and I'll guarantee you it's the only plan in the state, only plan that's been proposed in the state, where every patient gets to choose which providers they want to work with. And decisions are made by patients and providers, not by doctors or insurance companies, and not by insurance companies or employers or government. So the whole quest is they're afraid government's going to take away my choices. We're going to give them the choice so it stays with them and their, their medical providers. This really is about... This is really is about expanding people's freedom and control over their own health care. That's really what this is about. So the whole socialism, that's, that's just a red herring boogeyman that people pull out. What we have right now is a profiteering junket that has resulted in people's deaths and um, has caused tremendous suffering in our state and throughout the country. So, um, and, and I think that Representative Ryer's points were we're on point, right? We, this is not actually a socialist system. <laughs> like, if you actually look at the plan, the plan doesn't involve government taking over the health care system as with the VA and actually delivering care. What it is is it takes out that middlemen profiteering part of our health care system and creates a single payer 
right? So what we're trying to do is allow patients to work directly with their providers and that their providers with their patients decide what kind of care they need and we take the profit out of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it.